Growing up as a young girl in West Virginia, Donna Sue Groves loved to check out the advertisements that were painted on the sides of old barns in the countryside. When she herself purchased a farm in Adams County, along with her mother in 1989, she vowed to her mother that she was going to paint a quilt square on the side of their barn in tribute of her mother, who was a master quilter. Hi, I'm Marilyn Forbes, and welcome to Around the Town with Marilyn Forbes. Today, we're going to be talking about the special art form of barn quilting. As you can see up here, we have a barn quilt right here in Bullskin Township. We're going to be stepping inside now to talk with Colleen Kinesny, who actually pretty much single-handedly launched barn quilting in our own area. Well, now we're inside with Colleen Kinesny, who's going to be telling us a little bit about how she got involved with this unique and interesting art. Now, it actually started in 2001 with Donna Sue Groves' first quilt, and it's sprouted since then. I believe it's in, what, 27 different states now have this states type of across form? the country, and there's over 4,000 barn quilts. Oh, that's, a, that's amazing. Now, yeah. how, how did you, tell us your story. How did you get involved okay. with this? Well, this was in the spring of 2009. I was just reading a country home magazine, <laughs> and I came across an article in there um, about a barn quilt. Um, it was uh, two artisans down in North Carolina that would paint barn, any barn quilt pattern, any quilt block pattern, I should say, on wood, and they would ship it wherever you wanted. Oh, wow! Well, okay. I thought that would look so cool in my barn. So I, I kind of looked into it, and then the more I thought about it, I thought that if you put wood outside, especially on the outside of a barn, it might deteriorate over a short period of time. So, especially in Pennsylvania with our right. elements. Yeah, that's right. Because we're very <coughs> damp here. So I, I got in touch with my cousin who. He does um, metal art. Mm, okay. And I said, we need to, he has a plasma cutter. I said, we need to put some of these quilt block patterns into your plasma cutter computer and just see what comes out. Mm -hmm. So mine was the first one. The one that's on my barn was the first one that we made. Okay, and that's the one that we saw earlier at the right. beginning. Okay. Right, and that was in July of 2009. Um, over July 4th weekend, we hung that one. Oh. We hung that one up then. And, um, and it has it has spread. I I was working with um, members, some members of the Bullskin Historical Society, and together we promoted the idea of a quilt trail through this area. Okay. Now, what what is a quilt trail? Um, well, there's quilt trails all over the country. Mm -hmm. Quilt trails, barn quilt trails. Um, they're they're just um, trails that are following quilts that are put on the outside of barns okay. or buildings um, and a lot of them have stories to tell uh, it's a, a, a driving trail is what it is oh so you drive from from quilt to quilt to oh right. okay oh, right in some states some states um, have a dial and discover project with theirs where you can actually type into your punch into your cell phone and you can hear the farmers history and stories about that quilt as you sit there and oh, wow. and admire the quilt that's on the building. Have you had a chance to go anywhere that here? in the country to, to uh, see any of these? Have you have you have you gone on any of these trails yourself? No, <laughs> I have to, actually. I don't get a chance to get out much. <laughs> yeah, that's right. You have like but 100 kids or something, don't you? Six. Okay. <laughs> three boys and three girls. <laughs> so at s some point, I will be able to get out. And not, that's what I would like to do. It would be a nice family around. vacation yeah. for you guys. So there's right. a couple in Ohio, I understand. that. There's Sue, a lot in Ohio. Okay. Donna Sue Groves. That is where it actually originated. Back in 2001, um, there was a, a woman named Donna Sue Groves. And she and her mother bought an old farm. And mm -hmm. on that piece of property was an old tobacco barn. Oh. And her mother, Nina Maxine Groves, was her mother's name. She was an avid quilter, a fifth generation quilter, actually. Oh, wow. So she wanted to just honor her mother in painting a quilt block pattern directly onto the barn siding of their old tobacco barn. And that quilt block that they did was, um, it was the snail's trail quilt block pattern. They put it right onto the barn. There were some other people in the the community that helped paint that. And 
from there it spread to 20 other barns across Adams, Adams County, Ohio oh. was the area. Um, by the end of 2003, there were 20 barn quilts painted across Adams County. And from there it spread. You and it spread, yeah, it started to spread, but it was kind of spreading <laughs> west more okay. than back this way. Oh, really? Okay. Our barn quilts trail is actually one of the first ones in Pennsylvania. How exciting. Yeah. There's another, there's another quilt trail that I found out about after doing some research, and it's up in Wyalusing, Pennsylvania, which is on the New York oh, which is going to ask. state okay, border. So that's very, mm -hmm. that's really far north of us then. Yeah, but they have a very established trail. They have over 100 quilts on their trail. Oh, my. And, there's and they're the ones that have to dial and discover. Oh, really? Okay, mm -hmm. we'll have to keep that. Anybody yeah. traveling north, you might want to make, yeah. a, make and a note can, of that. You can watch um, online. They have a slideshow of all their quilts, oh. and it's set to music. It's so nice. Oh, my. But that is on, um, the qu if you type in the quilted corners of Wyalusing, you can watch their slideshow. Um, so but we, go ahead. No, I was going to say, so you started yours in, you did yours in 2009, was your first one that you did. That was the first one that we did. Then what, did people start coming to you that they wanted one as well, or how did, how, Actually, did, we, how did we get them all over the area then? Well, I put up, I put up my barn quilt, and there was, there's a man, Earl Bruner is his name. He was the first one that approached me about having a sign. He called it a sign. And we sell hay here on our farm, so... Someone ca he came and knocked on the door, and I thought he was someone here to buy hay. Okay. He said, "I'm interested <laughs> in buying one of your signs," and I was just so thrilled that he <laughs> that he wanted to to be part mm -hmm. of it and wanted wanted something. So his quilt block pattern is actually the the Pennsylvania state quilt block pattern. Oh, how neat! Yeah, back in 19, 1907, Hearth and Home magazine sponsored um, a quilt block pattern contest for each state in mm -hmm. the country and um, the the quilt block pattern that he has on his barn is Pennsylvania's state quilt block. Really? Yeah. Now, did he choose that or did you choose that? He chose that one. Okay. He chose that one. Um, I was so happy I gave him a jar of jam. <laughs> <laughs> and some free hay. <laughs> <laughs> no, but um, and from there, um, a couple of his neighbors then saw that he had one, and they wanted one. Oh. Um, it, and, and it, it just really has spread. just spread. It really has spread. And that was in, that was in the fall of 2009. Uh, during the summer of 2009, I set up a, a Pennsylvania barn quilt booth down at the fairgrounds. Oh, okay. So other people could see what we were doing, and they learned about the project there. And, I, and that's how it and it's spread since then. And it's still still growing. I mean, yeah. I imagine you have orders and... Yeah, yeah, we do. Now, if I would call you, say, today, and yeah. I, I would like to order one of these, how long average would it take for well, someone to get completed and return to me? About eight weeks. Oh, that's not bad. Yeah. Okay. It's and you ship eight. every place, too, right? You we'll th ship These aren't everywhere. just in this area. No. Yours aren't just in this area. No, actually, the, the first out-of-state one is in Missouri now. Really? On Cary Patch Farms. Uh, yeah. And oh, the, my. So we'll ship them. We can ship them. Um, but uh, this, one, this one here that's in front of us is one of the first ones that we made. Um, well, it seems heavy. It is very heavy. We made this one out of steel. This is 16-gauge steel. Gonna catch on my table nah. <laughs> but um, this weighs about 25 pounds. Oh gracious! But um, each piece is powder coated, and then we bolt them together with these with stainless steel mm -hmm. hardware, and we put rubber spacers between each layer, so they're they're three dimensional. Oh, she's gonna say it's like a 3D effect, yeah. Right, and also we we did that so precipitation and rainwater could pass through. Oh, when how you smart! Okay, so you would never have a puddle of of water laying against um, your barn quilt. But since that time, we have started to make them out of aluminum, which is much oh, okay. much lighter weight. Um, a piece like this, this is a two by two quilt, and it would, out of aluminum, it would only weigh about 10 pounds. But we, we still put it together the same way. We, it's still three dimensional, and we have um, uh, all stainless steel hardware. And they come with holes pre-drilled, so you can hang them right onto your barn or your house mm. or your building or wherever you'd like to hang them. That's right. That these don't have to just be on barns, no. right? They can be. No. Now, no. I, I do know from I, I did a little little research on barn quilts, and that there are certain barn quilt trails that the buildings have to be 
so old. They have mm -hmm. to be 50 years, 100 years. Do you do the same for yours, or can anyone have one of these? Or well, any, every any state has their own guidelines, you know, and because this is this is relatively new to Pennsylvania and to our area, um, I wanted to, I wanted to to have some guidelines that maybe your home had to be at least 100 years old, or your barn had to be on the historic registry, but. So many people really like them and just like to admire a piece of artwork mm -hmm. hanging outside sure. on their Something building different. that there are no guidelines. Anyone can have one. And there's also a couple businesses in the area that have right. those, correct? Right. There's a woodworking shop that has one. Um, my hairdresser has oh, one. There you go. <laughs> and we have started also to do some signage for businesses. Mm -hmm. And we make our signs the same way that we do the barn quilts. Now this looks like a like a like a little Americana type flag. Mm -hmm. Some of the, or I, I guess a, a majority of the barn quilts that are made, they're patterned after actual quilts that people have in their house. Right. right. Um, the first one that we did like that was for um, Mr. Hogan. He's a farmer uh, that lives down the road here in Bullskin. And his granddaughter approached me at the fair, hmm. at our booth. This is just last year here? This okay. Was, All right. Well, this was in 2009. Oh, okay. This was two years ago. And this she had, the, her grandmother had just passed away. And hmm. she had made a beautiful embroidered quilt. And she brought that quilt to me and, and wanted us to see if we could model a barn quilt after her grandmother's quilt. So we did that. We did that. And we put... Um, Across the top, it says, in loving memory of Janet Hogan. Oh, now how did you do that? Did you bring the quilt here and take pictures yeah, of it, or, or what we, did you do? We laid the quilt out. We took a, a picture. We scanned in on an area where we could make the make the quilt from, um, and then we we scanned that picture into our plasma cutter, and that plasma cutter will cut out any design that is that is in there. So oh. that the quilts actually a lot of people now like to have family heirloom quilts mm -hmm. matched. There's some people that just pick quilt block patterns and that's fine too. Mm -hmm. But what I've also started to do um, is record family history. So each farmer who has each farmer or person who has a, a quilt um, they write up extensive history of their home place. They dig up old black and white photographs. Um, any interesting stories other than just when it was built and who built it. These are interesting stories that would bring a smile to your oh. face. Um, and each family has put in a recipe also. Oh. So you can go on my website, pabarnquilts.com, and click on the, the PA Barn Quilt Trail link. Mm -hmm. And there's a PDF file on there. And it has everyone's pictures and their, all their information. So you could print that out yourself, and then you can pick up one of our brochures, which, which has the driving trail inside. Show and show everybody um, what that looks like there. This is brochures, and they're just kind of around different businesses in the in the area. But it's listed here of all the quilts on the on the trail, mm -hmm. and you could um, print out the information. And as you drive the trail, then you could read about each family's history. Oh. and learn about some history in bullskin.